Welcome back everybody to Desktop Inventions. Now today we're going to be doing a video on upgrades and mods for the Creality CR... Wait a second. For the Creality CR30. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So I printed off a few sweet upgrades on this printer, like this Master Sword here, but lately I've been itching for some upgrades. And the thing I want to upgrade the most is the noise. This is a noisy printer. We can see it here printing at about 59 or 60 decibels. Now compare that to the Ender 3 I have over here, and that's just 47 or 48 decibels while it's printing, so it's really manageable to work next to. So let's get this printer propped up on its side and take a look under the hood. Now when we take the screws out of this cover here and remove it, we can see there's two main sources of the noise. One is this fan over here above the motherboard, and the other is the fan in the power supply down here. So let's start first by looking at the motherboard fan. So I've got it powered on here by a power source, and you can see when I lift it away from the shroud here, it gets a lot quieter. Not only is that sheet metal mesh making the fan more noisy, but we can actually see here with this tissue that it's restricting the airflow. So when I lift the fan off of the mesh, you can see it's blowing a lot more air across the tissue. So I think I've got a pretty simple solution here to quiet the fan down and get some more airflow. So I'm going to remove the screws here, and then I'm going to take and put some 5mm brass standoffs underneath the fan. Now with those standoffs in place, that'll give a 5mm gap between the fan and the metal mesh. And now we can hear from the results that the fan is significantly quieter. So now let's get everything put back together, and let's do a test. And now we can see here the noise level has dropped to about 58 decibels. Since we're also going to be impacting the thermal performance with this testing, I installed a couple thermal couples, one near the power supply and one near the motherboard here. So we're going to monitor those throughout our testing. So with the stock printer, both of those temperatures were about 30 degrees Celsius after one hour printing. So that'll be our target moving forward. Now after our fan adjustment, the power supply didn't change much, but the motherboard temperature went down to just 26 and a half degrees. Alright, so next up we're going to take it to the next level with this motherboard fan. Now I've added a DC converter in line here, so we're going to step the voltage down from 24 volts to just 14 volts. This will slow the fan speed down, which will make the fan run a lot quieter. Now let's get that reassembled and move on to the testing. So now with the lowered fan voltage, we're printing as low as 55 decibels. And actually if we look over here, the fans are getting quiet enough that we're starting to hear the stepper motors making noise. So the printer is now quieter, but over in our thermal testing, we see the temperature is drifting up above our 30 degree target. We're up to 34 degrees by the motherboard now. So I decided to go back to the DC converter and bump the voltage up from 14 volts to 17 volts. Looking at the sound test, we're still in the 55 to 57 decibel range, even though we bumped up the fan voltage. And looking at the temperature testing, we're back in our 30 degree range, so that's good. Next up here, I decided to print off this fan cover that's pretty popular to put over the power supply fan and see if that makes a noise reduction. I'll be honest, I have my doubts on this one. Now I'll have to move this wire out of the way, and then an important note when installing this fan cover is to take the screws out one at a time. If you take both screws out, the fan will drop inside the power supply and you'll have to take the whole thing apart. Putting our screws in one at a time, we now have this fan cover installed, so let's see how it works. To be honest, I don't feel much for airflow coming out of here. Unfortunately, this cover is a little bit too thick, so I have to bend the cover back into place to get it reassembled. But it'll be okay just for some testing. And now for the sound testing, we're reading as low as 52 decibels, and the stepper motors are still pushing up to 56 decibels at times. But now we look over at the temperature, and things got pretty bad. The internal air temperature is now reaching 35 degrees. So I think this is probably due to a couple reasons. One, the cover is slowing down the airflow. And two, the air is now circulating inside of the box rather than ventilating it out of the box. But I think I've got a better solution up my sleeve. This is the UHP 350 power supply from Meanwell. So for this upgrade, I'm going to be taking the power supply out and redoing the AC power wiring, which can be very dangerous and can kill you. So be sure to take all the proper safety precautions. Never work with AC power when the unit is powered on. And if you've never been trained with AC power before, this upgrade might not be for you. So while I'm trying to get that old power supply out of the box, let me tell you a little bit more about why I chose this Meanwell UHP 350 power supply. So the first reason is this new power supply is designed to run in continuous operation without a fan. So we can completely eliminate the fan as a source of noise and a potential point of failure. The second reason is this Meanwell power supply has its electronic components encapsulated in gel, so they're protected against humidity, dust, and cat hair, which I have a lot of. 
And finally, the third reason is this new power supply is more efficient, which means less electricity consumption and less heat. So this Creality power supply that came with the printer is likely a clone of the LRS350 power supply from Meanwell that used to come with other Creality printers. And comparing the spec sheet of those two power supplies online, we can see that the new power supply is about 6% more efficient. And I did verify this with my own measurements, the new power supply saved about 5% of power. But don't get me wrong, this is not a financial decision. With the amount of money you'd save, it would take about 18 straight years of printing to pay off this new power supply. And now back to the power supply mounting. So I was able to reuse most of the AC power wires, but I did have to add an extra ground wire since the original ground wire was too short. And I was able to reuse the DC wiring with no issues there. And for the mounting, I ended up using the original mounting holes and these funky aluminum brackets screwed into some standoffs that would clamp the power supply down. It definitely would have been a better solution to just drill some new holes, but I didn't have a drill available, so I went with this method. So now I've got the unit powered up and I verify that everything is working okay. Now we just have a single fan in this box. So now it's time to get this cover slapped back on and let's get to some testing. So now the sound testing is showing as low as 51 decibels. And actually we're starting to run out of things we can do without getting into the printer head and stepper motors. And looking at the thermal test, our temperatures are way below our 30C target, so we're looking good there. All right, for this next mod, I'll be honest, I'm not sure if it's gonna have any real impact, but I had some flexible filament lying around that I was itching to use up. So I made these new printer feet that I embedded some washers in partway through the print. So now I've got four of these printed out, let's get them put on the printer. So this printer is so heavy and the moving mass of the printing head is so small that I doubt these feet are really going to have much of an effect, but I do like how they look. Well, we can see here they are slightly softer than the original. And for the next upgrade, during this unboxing video you can see this printer came with a ton of extra stuff and until now I've had no place to put it. So I thought I'd organize these extra things into spare parts and tools and then figure out some places to put these. First, let's start off with the tools. So I designed this neat tool holder that should hold all the tools that this printer came with. This one will be super easy to install. We'll just take out these two bolts here, slap this holder on there, and reinstall the bolts. Now this thing can hold spare nozzles, Allen keys, wrenches, USB holder, and my personal favorite, the filament snippers. Now for the spare parts, I've been working on this origami box concept. So this box lays out flat during the print so we can get some magnets embedded in there. And then you can fold across these living hinges to form up into a nice box. Now to keep the box from unfolding, I print out these little push pins that'll hold things into place. Since the snap fit on the lid didn't turn out that well, I'm going to use some super glue and drop some magnets into this lid. Then I'll drive some M3 screws into this base here so that the lid can be magnetically attracted to it. And just like that, we have a nice smooth magnetic lid. Now I have a couple options where to put this box. I can slap it on the front since it has magnets embedded into it. I can stick to the steel frame. Alternatively, I added a couple holes to the back here so we can use some bolts and some T-nuts and attach it to this extrusion frame here. I'm going to use this ladder option for now since it's a much more sturdy attachment. Well, it would be pretty sturdy if it wasn't for the push pins. So I've decided to install some M3 screws instead. That'll be a much more sturdy and strong connection. There we go. That's much better and smooth now. Now it's time to put all this extra junk, I mean spare parts, into the box. There we have it, now the box upgrade's complete and we have even more room for things in the future. Now for this next upgrade, we'll be upgrading the PTFE tube and replacing it with some Capricorn tube. I found this 3D printing upgrade from Chep, who got it from Luke Hatfield. I'll put a more detailed video link in the description down below. Now with this PTFE tube disassembled, we're basically just going to replace the section that's inside of the heat sink. So we're going to put that tube in the hot end and make a mark so we know how long it is. So now I'm going to awkwardly measure this on camera with some calipers and we'll know that's 30 millimeters. So the Capricorn tube is preferred over PTFE because it has a higher melting point so it's less susceptible to melting in the hot end. Now the most important part is to get a nice square cut on this tube so I'm going to cut it twice, once to square the end and once for the final length. And we can see here that it looks pretty square. Next I printed out these special beveled washers designed by Chep, links in the description below. Now this next step is very important, since the PTFE tube that came with the printer was not cut squarely, there's some junk left in the hot end, so I'm going to have to disassemble the silicone boot, take out the nozzle, and get that cleaned out. So to do this I use an allen key and I push the PTFE tube through the hot end and out came some wonderful junk. Now I'm going to repeat this process again and again until the hot end is finally clear of debris. And after three times through, the hot end was completely clean, and now we're ready to reassemble. 
so I heated up the hot end and made sure the nozzle was nice and snug. Then I inserted the new Capricorn tube, followed by the special beveled washer, so the flat side should be down and the bevel should be up. Now this next step is very important. Make sure the beveled washer is down at least 5 millimeters from the top of the hot end. This way you have enough threads for the fitting to properly grip. If you don't have enough threads, that can strip out and ruin your aluminum heatsink. So with that special washer pushing down your Capricorn tube, it'll guarantee that there's no gap between the tube and your nozzle. So now we can just reverse the process to reassemble this printing head. Pay attention in this corner here, there's a special terminal that's needed for grounding that's really easy to miss. So with all of that reassembled, we should be on to more smooth and consistent printing. Not to mention, this is a pretty cheap upgrade, costing just a couple of bucks. And for the final upgrade, I've got to find a way to keep the cats off of my 3D printing bed. No. No. So I've got a pretty simple solution for this. We're just going to use an acrylic sheet over the front of the printer. So I just need to mark a cutout in this corner for my new tool hanger. And to mount the hinges, I'm going to be using this awesome reversible hinge by WD-73. I've added a link for this hinge in the description down below. Next, I'll be using this handy dandy calibration tube to make sure the hinges are evenly spaced on the frame here. Next, I'll put this acrylic sheet in place and mark the location of the holes for the hinges. With those holes freshly added to the sheet, now it's time to finally bolt this sheet in place with some M4 bolts and nuts. Now for the most satisfying part, we get to peel off the protective film and reveal that shiny new acrylic sheet. Now let's see Link the Cat's reaction to this new impenetrable barrier. Yeah, it's just as I suspected. He's completely unable to get into the printer now. Well, now I'd call that one an upgrade well done. So now it's time to put all these printer upgrades to the test. I print out a bigger print here, and Link is going to do the quality inspection right off the bed. And then I'll do the uh, follow-up quality inspection after that. So this is the first longer print I did since the upgrades. It's about a six-hour print, and I'm pretty happy with the quality. Um, pretty smooth all the way around. A little bit dirty on the bottom where the bed is but there's no nozzle jams. It's smooth and consistent all the way through. So pretty happy and I think we're hopefully on to a road to a more smooth printing. Now with the printing quality test passed, time to get the printer off the floor and into its new home. All right, that's gonna be the final resting place for the printer, at least until I decide to upgrade it again. So as always, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time at Desktop Inventions.